G'day. Well, guys and girls, finally it's here. Uh, my review on the Infrared Rico RH50 thermal rifle scope. Shout out to Infrared Outdoors Australia for sending me some products. I pretty much said to them up front that um, I'm only happy to test their gear and have a play with it if I'm not going to have my hands tied behind my back, uh, that I'm allowed to talk about the pros and the cons of the unit. Um, I feel that I owe it to my followers and my members to be as honest as possible and pretty much give you enough information so that if you buy one of these and you get it out of the box, you mount it and you go out and use it, it's exactly what you expected. Um, so I suppose to get started, this will be fairly long-winded. Um, I'm going to try and cover everything. At the end of the video, um, I'll either put it in this video or I'll do some more videos of actual footage of using the scope. I've had it for about three weeks, put about 300 rounds through it so far. A lot of it on the range. Uh, I've been out probably about eight nights in those, those three weeks and used it out in the field for some of my contract work. Very happy with it so far. Um, so pretty much it's just a matter of running through it. I wanted to, to know the product inside out, test every feature, um, really give it a, a, a thorough workout so that I could give you the information that you require to um, you know, be, be informed of what the unit can do, what it, what it can't do, if anything, and, um, you know, and what to expect if you buy one. So firstly, it comes, as you'd expect, nice big padded case. Standard bits and pieces in the case. I won't go into too much detail. Comes with a charging cable, uh, external battery charger. The the batteries are detachable from the scope, so they're not a, a, an inbuilt battery. Uh, a big plus in the kit is it comes with two batteries, not just one. Comes standard with two. Batteries run for about seven hours. Um, the fully charged battery will last that long. I love the fact that it has a second battery because you've always got that as a backup out in the field. I've always bought a second battery for all my thermal gear, and it's nice to know that go out with two fully charged batteries, it's gonna get you through all night uh, and a bit more if you need to. Um, comes with the mount that you see on it. Uh, it's a quick detach mount, uh, easy to, to fit up to the scope. Uh, it's just three screws in the bottom, and um, that mount actually attaches to pretty much any rifle, as providing it's got a weaver or a pick rail, picatinny rail. Now I know all the picatinny rails and all that sort of aren't all the same spec. They can differ a little bit, the groove thickness um, and the depth. This has got adjustments on the opposite side of the opposite side of the tabs. So you can tighten it or you know back the tension off on that side just so you can get a nice tight fit onto your rail. Just remember it, it has a recoil lug at the bottom. Once you sit that in your rail, before you tighten up there, the quick tabs, slide it forward in the rail just to counteract any recoil and then close your, your QD tabs and lock it off. Um, very happy with the rail. Uh, it's probably the, the best rail that I've seen come out standard on a thermal scope. While I'm talking about that, I have checked whether it returns to zero or not. So I actually took some shots this morning, um, had it on bullseye, took the scope off the rifle, put it back on the rifle, took another shot. I did that multiple times. I think it was about eight or nine times. And I had a grip the size of a thumbnail at 50 meters. So um, that, that returns to zero fine. Um, very impressed with that. And it's uh, a real nice feature and a nice to have. There's no need really to go and buy an aftermarket rail uh, like we do on some of the other gear. And yeah, kudos to them. It's, it's probably the best mount I've seen to come standard on a thermal. A um, little bit about the scope. So. It is a 640 uh, by 512 uh, resolution scope. Uh, has a 12 micron um, sensor in it, uh, running at 50 millikelvin. So very high end specs. Um, has a 50 mil lens at the front. As you can see, germanium lens. Uh, it's a F1 lens and it has a very high resolution screen in the back of it. So it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a, I think I've written it down here somewhere, 1024 by 760. Uh, high-res screen in the back um, so pretty much as, as high spec as you can get at the moment the base magnification on it is three um, I think that's a really usable base magnification for a thermal scope um, 
as everyone knows, the, the best picture and best clarity you're going to get is on base magnification. Uh, as soon as you, they, these all come with digital zoom. And as soon as you zoom in on a digital picture, so if you go from three times to six times, you've, you've pretty much doubled the zoom and halved the clarity. Um, so that's when the picture starts to pixelate and blur. Um, the higher end units, it doesn't pixelate or blur anywhere near as much as the lower end units. This has a step zoom in it. So generally what zooms do is they double. So it goes from three to six and six to 12. Um, on some of the other models that are two base mag might go two, four, eight, sixteen. 16. Um, what I really like about this one is that it starts on three, it goes to six, then it goes to nine, then to 12. So they've thrown a nine in there. So they've sort of just halved it, goes up in increments of three. I really like that because it gives you more options um, of what you can shoot on. It does have picture in picture. I don't usually use picture in picture that much. I like to shoot on high magnification um, and I've shot foxes recently out to 350 meters with this on 12 times and it gets a little bit pixelated. Um, not as bad as a lot of other units I've used, but it's still definitely a clear and clean enough image to be able to take a shot on 12 times very easily. Um, very impressed with that sort of that feature. On this, you'll see that I've got a laser rangefinder on it. Now that is an add-on. Um, you can buy them separate. Um, you've then got to align them to the unit, plug them in, all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to talk about that today. That's something I'll touch on um, at some other time. So just want to really brush up on, on this particular scope. Uh, what else do I have to tell you? So they are recoil rated up to a 300 Win Mag. Um, they have inbuilt recording. They have a 30, 32 gig inbuilt uh, memory. Uh, and they come, this is, this is a, a nice feature and it's, it's good that they're comparable with other you know, high-end products in Australia. They come with a three-year warranty. Um, it's, it's just peace of mind when you're spending this kind of money that you get you know, a, a decent warranty with it. And, and I just think that's really important. Uh, last but not least, the price point. So this is pretty much top end spec um, and the price point, they're, they're just super, super duper competitive. I can't believe that they're, they're retailing for what they are. They're retailing for $6,299, um, which is pretty damn amazing. I think the, the laser range finder is an extra six or $700. Um, but yeah, just, just for a top end um, thermal scope that has just got, you know, all, all the really good features, um, $6,299, bucks. pretty awesome. Uh, it does not have audio. Um, not many people have, you know, putting that out on social media. It does not have a microphone in it. So don't buy one of these expecting that, you know, they're going to do a firmware upgrade in the not too distant future and, and they're going to enable the audio. So you have inbuilt video, um, Wi-Fi, picture in picture, color palettes, color screen, color reticles, um, all those, you know, um, all those really nice features, but it does not have audio. Will that happen in the future? I would say definitely. Um, how long? How long before that? You know, they'll, they'll implement that into their their rifle scope range. I have no idea. So the things I want to talk about first are the things that that I find really, really, really good on the on the unit. Um, up the top here, you've got the focus knob, so you can see that there. Um, Compared to other models, um, I really like what they've done with the focus knob. I know it sounds insignificant, but it, it's really smooth, easy to turn. Um, it just feels really solid and secure. Um, there's, no, there's no noise when you turn it, which is nice. But the thing that really gets me about this one is that it, it's just got such a wide range. Um, so you, with other units I've played with uh, in other brands, it's just a real fine turn. You know, it's only the tiniest little increment and you've gone past that sort of that perfect focus magnification um, or per perfect focus point. Um, on this one, uh, it's quite broad. Uh, there's, there's a lot of range in the, in, the, in the focus dial and you can really focus it, you know, nice and easily to get a really crisp in image. Um, the other thing that uh, is very impressive on it is the picture, the picture quality of the target animal or the detail in the actual animal that, that's in the center of the screen. Um, it runs a self-rendering type software, which auto adjusts the image. What it actually does is it, it locates or detects that, that heat signature 
and it puts all of its effort into try and give you, trying to give you the, 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 the clearest possible image it can of that animal. Uh, unfortunately, that takes away a bit with regards to the rest of the picture because it's focusing so hard on the target detail. Um, the back of the picture can become a little bit washed out um, and, and not as, as clean and um, sharp as, as the, the target image. But um, that's the trade-off you pay for that type of software to, to get that incredible image. You know, that's what they've done. Uh, and I think it works really well. On top of that, they have a different type of recording setup. So it doesn't actually do a screen record. It records off an internal part of the unit. So it bypasses doing a, a screen capture. And that's why the output, the video output that you're seeing out there on social media, the videos are just so crisp and clear. You're pretty much seeing what you see through the eyepiece is the quality that you're seeing um, on the video footage. Um, the downside to it, if you could call it a downside, is that it only records certain things. So it'll record the screen, um, what you're actually seeing on, on that screen, and it will record the crosshair. It won't record what you're doing. So if you're pushing the zoom button and it's showing you on the screen that you're zooming 3, 6, 9, 12, that doesn't come up on the video footage. If you've got a range finder on it and you're ranging, the range finding um, icons and the distances don't come up on your video footage. They all come up through the screen, but it doesn't catch, capture them on the on the video. Um, other things like the icons, um, going through and, and trying to do a how-to video on, you know, this is how you go through the menu. Um, you can record that through here and, and generally show it. On this you can't because you, you don't see any of those little bits and pieces. Um, It'd be a nice feature to have, but obviously they've got it so that their output video is just much cleaner and nicer. Uh, it does have inbuilt Wi-Fi. Uh, you download the Infrared app, and one thing I will say is that the Wi-Fi connection on this unit is, is so stable and so quick. Um, they've, they've just got it dialed in perfectly. There's no lag. Uh, you download the video seamlessly. Um, the app is probably doesn't have the features that some of the other the other companies have, but the app works flawlessly. And, and that's more important than anything else, that connection side of things is, is what I, I value more than anything. There's been a lot of conjecture in the past with thermal scopes not holding zero. So I've had issues with that in the past with other models and, and other brands, and I've, I've turned around and put this through some vigorous testing. So I regularly put this on paper I do with all my thermal scopes. As a contract shooter, you know I can't afford to to have a scope that's not shooting where it needs to, where where it's zeroed to shoot. So with this one, I zeroed it in, and I've been going down to the range every couple of days and in different temperatures, different times of the day, and putting it back on paper. And I've left the target out there so that you know I had a reference point and it was at the same distance. And every single time I've been down, it's just been shooting one ragged hole at 50 meters. So holding zero has been performing flawlessly. Um, very, very thrilled with that. When I've been out in the field, I, like I said, I've shot um, a couple of really long distance foxes over the, the, the past couple of weeks. I think one was at 355 and the other one is about 310. Uh, a lot of foxes in between, you know, the, the 50 to 200 metre mark. And every fox that I've aimed at, it's pretty pretty much hit exactly where I expected it to. Um, so within range, it's been, you know, exactly where the crosshairs, are, uh, crosshairs were and, and out past my point blank range. You know, I've been holding over and the fox has been dropping and it's, it's just been extremely accurate. Um, the image itself would have to be, clarity-wise, um, the, the clearest target detail image that I've ever looked through in a thermal. Um, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I find that out to a couple of hundred meters, the white hot works really, really well. Past that to get um, a really good view of the animal, quite often I'm going to black hot. Um, that just seems to render a better picture and, and give you a, uh, an easier identification out past those distances. Um, the detection range on these sort of things is, is ridiculous. They detect out to like 2,600 meters, I think it is 20, 25, 97 or something like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's got a lot of grunt, um, very, very capable. And yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been a, an absolute pleasure to use. A few things that, you know, a little bit different to what I'm used to. Um, I'm not a big fan of picture in picture. I never have been. I find it clutters the screen a bit, but I know a lot of people out there that love picture in picture. Um, so I played around with the picture in picture on this. 
One thing I notice is they've got it set up in the infrared models differently. So the base screen, what happens with picture in picture generally, or what we're used to, is that you turn that on, you get a little window up the top of the, the, the main screen, and it's usually double the magnification of the base screen. So if you've got a, a, a three power unit, the picture in picture is at six, you zoom, the picture in picture goes to 12, you zoom again, the picture in picture goes to 24 or whatever it might be. Um, on the infrares, when you zoom, the base screen or the main screen actually zooms as well. So on base magnification, the picture in picture will be on six and the main screen will be on three. When you zoom in once, um, the main screen will go to six, the picture in picture will go to 12, so forth and so on. Um, some people say, you know, well, that sort of defeats the purpose. I want to have the, the widest field of view that I can on the main screen. Um, I tend to agree. I'll put that information back to infrared. Um, whether or not that's something that they'll look at, at modifying, I suppose will depend on how much feedback they get and how important that is. Um, is the picture in picture usable? Definitely. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's like I said, it's it's not a big thing for me because it's not something I generally worry about. Uh, what else? Uh, zeroing. So this zero is typically like most other thermal scopes. A lot of people have said that you need to zero it on base magnification. I tested zeroing it on zoom, um, picture and picture on, picture and picture off not on base mag magnification and on base mag, uh, it, all, it all zeroed the same. The one thing I did note, which I think is really important for people to, to understand, is that you have different zeroing profiles in these scopes. Um, for example, I run um, another brand of scope, I run a Pulsar, and I, uh, I use a, a special aftermarket QD mount that re returns to zero, so I can go from rifle to rifle to rifle. I run a 22, a 223, and a 308. I like to have my profiles called that respectively. So I might call my A profile 223, so I know that's my 223. I might call my B 308 and my, my C um, 22 uh, for the 22. What I've noticed is that on the infrared, they've, they've got a, a different type of system in there. So whatever distance you put in for your profile, it actually changes the click value of your zeroing. Um, respectively. So if you, you put in 50 meters, um, one click on base magnification when you're zeroing will equal 1.5 centimeters. If you put in 100 meters, it'll equal three centimeters. If you put in, um, you know, 200 meters, it'll equal six centimeters. You can zoom in and, and bring those increments down. The more you zoom in, the, the finer you can just adjust the increments. But I just think it's really important to know that whatever you call your zero profile, uh, or your zero distance will dictate the amount of clicks uh, or the, the size of the clicks that you're going to be adjusting. So really important to keep that in mind. Other than that, um, overall, um, very, very happy with the unit. Um, it holds zero. Um, the image is amazing. Um, lacks a little bit of detail um, when you have a, a heat signature uh, in the foreground. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of detail out of the background. So if you had a house, say, at four or 500 metres behind that image and you had a heap of cows in the front, you may not be able to pick up that, out that house, you know, um, definitively. Um, when there's no heat sig signatures uh, in the frame, um, the, the landscape and the trees and the definition on everything from, from up close out to, out to distance is just incredible. So totally different rendered type of image, and it's just a matter of, you know, um, that's the technology the technology that's in this scope. Uh, does it work? Yes, it works incredibly well. Um, it's just different to, to other stuff that I've used. All in all, um, I would have to say that uh, value for money, $6,299 for a 640-12 micron scope um, that has incredible image um, and target detail, uh, has multiple color palettes, uh, has black hot, white hot, and a couple of different colors. Um, the menu is very easy to use, uh, it's quite intuitive, uh, battery runtime is good, uh, two batteries in it, and you know, overall the, the mount is wonderful, um, it it's just feels really solid, it works well, it, it, it's just well built, does what it does, three year warranty, um, you know, uh, I think that if you decide to go down this path, it's, it's definitely worth your money, uh, very good value for money. And 
I'll put some videos up now and just show you what images, you know, what foxes look like at, at certain distances. You know, there's no sense just putting up cows and, and horses at 50 metres. Uh, you know, it's supposed to look bloody good at that distance. People want to know what a fox looks like at 300 metres, um, or what a rabbit looks like at 100, whether you can identify a fox at 300 metres. Um, obviously, your conditions will dictate, you know, how quickly you can identify something, um, the terrain, all that sort of stuff. But for a, a high-end thermal rifle scope, I really don't think you can go wrong with it. Um, if there's anything else I can answer, um, or you want any other information, please feel free to you know, leave a, a comment. Um, I'd appreciate it if you click on the, um, the link below if you decide to purchase. Uh, it's an affiliate link that goes direct to Infrared um, to try and cover all the, the effort and the time spent and money on ammunition and all the sort of stuff to bring you guys this information. Um, that affiliate link will... They give me a little bit of money back. They'll, it will also allow you guys to get a $50 discount if you mention um, the code that will be in it. And um, so it helps you, helps me, helps them, and um, it allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. I really appreciate your support. Don't forget to like and follow my group and my page. My page is Rodney Morris Thermal Hunting Australia, and my group is RJM Thermal Hunting Australia. Um, I'm going to be transitioning to YouTube shortly. Uh, I'll keep you posted as to the YouTube channel and, um, you know, I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, guys and girls. Talk to you later.